In this video, I'm going to be talking about how to solve a series and parallel circuit problem. With each of the circuit problems on their own, they're not particularly difficult, but then learning about series and parallel circuits at the same time can be confusing because their rules are significantly different. So if you see them worked out side by side, that might be helpful in seeing the similarities and differences between the two. So first of all, we're going to review some of the main concepts before getting into these calculations. So as you can see here, we have the rules for current voltage and resistance for a series and parallel circuit. So to recap, because electrons only follow a single path and they go through everything, there's the same current everywhere throughout the circuit. They're going to drop a portion of that total voltage through each of the individual resistors and to get the total resistance that the electrons feel, you just sum up all the individual resistors um, to get your total. Now for a parallel circuit where the electrons split up into multiple paths or multiple branches, their currents split up. And if you wanna find the total current, you're just gonna sum up all the individual currents. As for the voltage, the total voltage drop is equal to each of the individual voltage drops in each of the branches because the electrons only pass through a single branch. They don't pass through all three resistors like they do with the series circuit. And with the resistance, um, you just add up the inverses of each of the resistors, and that's equal to 1 over RT. Um, and the idea behind that is that if you add more resistors, you actually decrease the total resistance, because if you add another resistor in an additional branch, what you're doing is you're opening up an additional pathway and then causing the total resistance to drop. So let's go back to our original screen. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna solve for the series circuit first and then the parallel circuit second. And the order in which I'm gonna approach them is like this. So for the series circuit, I'm going to solve for the total resistance the current everywhere in the circuit, and then the individual voltage drops. And then when I get to the parallel circuit problem, I'm gonna do the voltage drops, the individual and total currents, and then the total resistance at the end. Um, so that's the order that I typically work them out in, and I think that makes it smooth and, and fairly simple. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and solve for all of those values for the series circuit to begin. All right, so I've completed the total resistance, current, and voltage drops for the series circuit. So as the electrons leave the power source, they are going to have a current of three amps everywhere throughout the circuit because there's only one path or one loop. The total current is the same as the individual current through any of the individual resistors. Um, from there, um, I was able to find the individual voltage drops and the individual voltage drops were just V equals IR. So basically just taking Ohm's law, taking that current of three amps and those individual 
resistance values of five, two, and three, um, taking the product of those two, and then finding the individual voltage drops for each one. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add up the 15 plus six, which is 21, 21 plus nine, which is 30. And that does equal my total voltage drop rating. So that seems to work out. So I found my total resistance, my current that applies to everywhere in the circuit, and then my individual voltage drops. Now I'm done with that series circuit problem. So I'm gonna move over to the right and go ahead and solve this parallel circuit problem. All right, so I've completed my parallel circuit problem. To start off, I included my voltages, which was pretty simple because the total voltage drop is the same as the voltage drop through each of the branches. And that happens because the electrons only travel through a single branch. So they're gonna drop that total amount of 30 volts. And then from there, I found the individual currents by taking Ohm's law and rearranging it. So I equals V over R. I had my 30 voltage um, rating for my numerator for each one of these. And then I just divided it by the individual resistance. So five ohms, two ohms, and the three ohms. And then once I found the quotient of those, I have six amps, 15 amps, and 10 amps through each of my individual branches. So after this six amps, 15 amps, and 10 amps flows through each of their individual branches, they're going to join together and as they merge back together over here, they're going to have a total current of 31 amps going in and out of the power source before they break up again into their individual currents. Now for my final step, I went ahead and found my total resistance. So this can be done a couple different ways. So we are summing up the inverse of each of the resistances and I have one over five plus one over two plus one over three. I could have found the lowest common denominator of 30 and added up the fractions manually. Um, so what I decided to do is the way that's a little more efficient, which is I just popped them into my calculator, got a total of 1.03, and that's equal to one over RT. And I finished off by cross multiplying the 1.03 and the RT. And then once I divided one, divided by um, 1.03, I got 0.97 ohms for my final total resistance. And that completes our parallel circuit problem. Um, so as you can see, each of those steps individually, just dividing a couple numbers, uh, multiplying a couple numbers, most of the steps aren't that complicated. So when people typically have trouble solving a series and parallel circuit problem, it's because they're getting some of their rules mixed up. So as long as you familiarize yourself with all the rules for current resistance and voltage, 
Um, it becomes a lot easier from there. So I hope it was helpful in seeing each of these problems side by side. Thank you for watching and listening.